remember it like it was yesterday. I remember them taking me to Unit 1. They beat me so bad that I didn't even remember what happened or where I was until 90 days later. Rikers is sadness. Rikers is humbling. Full of hate. Lawless too. I hated it. I hate, I hate that place. On any given day, Rikers Island Jail in New York City confines nearly 8,000 people. Conditions on the island are brutal, horrific, worse than most prisons where inmates serve long sentences after a conviction. But Rikers is a jail where 80% of the people locked up are awaiting their day in court and have not been convicted of a crime. They are innocent in the eyes of the law. 15 years old, my innocence was raw for me. Well, what happens is a lot of times you are subjected to getting raped in the bathroom. I, I, had, I had to have um, survival sex in the bathroom. I wasn't even scared. I just, I felt helpless. Like, I didn't know what to do. That's when I really realized, like, you on your own in the island. Even though he was charged with a crime, my son was never a criminal. He never had a criminal record. My son ended up staying in Rikers Island for six years, waiting for trial. He thought that he was going to die there. I'm still dealing with the trauma. Trauma is real. I don't care what nobody says, trauma is real. Ten years of waiting to close Rikers means ten years of more dreams deferred. I have seen how Rikers Island has destroyed communities. I've seen how people come back to the Bronx and come back to communities all across the city and they're different and they are changed and they are, they are fearful and they're hesitant to go and walk down the block and they, they look at, at parole officers and the regular cops and the community in a different way. How do we allow this to continue? heavy thing to try and follow so it is it is but I want people to know um, how that piece came about first of all I, I want people to know that uh, that piece that we did is in honor and memory of mrs. Benita Browder Cleef Browder's uh, mother uh, and we did that video in partnership with advocates who are working on the Rikers issue in partnership with formerly incarcerated New Yorkers and their families. And, and we actually have the director, Chris Jenkins, over there, uh, who pulled together this beautiful piece uh, for Google. And it will be shown on YouTube. Um, so I, wanted, I want you all to know where that came from, um, because it's an example of the work that Google is doing around criminal justice reform. And I guess, Susan, my question to you is, why are we doing this? Why is Google doing this? Well, so first of all, thank you all for, for being here and um, allowing us to have this conversation with you. And I guess, um, so I grew up in Staten Island, New York. Um, I actually was a former city representative and then I was a member of Congress from Staten Island and Brooklyn. So I could see Rikers while I travel throughout the city. Um, I never knew half these stories. I never knew any of these stories. Why didn't I know those stories? Because the gatekeepers kept them quiet. So, so I think there's two things for why Google, why we wanted Google to get involved in it. And it is number one, um, because as Holly said, it's all of us, right? When you get to meet these men and women, these boys and girls, um, you see a different face, you see a different side, you hear a different story um, about who these individuals are and how they got to be where they are and what we're doing when we reintegrate them and the power that we're trying to give them because really the difference between them and us is power 
and if we can use the Google power to help do a few things. Number one, give them power, give them voice, which with every individual that I have met, um, there's that recurring story. I had no voice, no one would listen to me. Um, and then of course, once you're incarcerated, it, it only gets worse. So give them voice, give them hope, and break down the gatekeepers who only tell us one side of the story of the individuals who wind up in jail, who wind up um, in a system that only accelerates the burn and the hurt and destroys so many individuals, so many lives, so many communities. So to Holly's point, if we can put that face on, mm -hmm. I think it makes it easier for us to have this conversation for individuals like myself who grew up thinking I was taking care of a community and representing a city and was blind to a lot of what either the gatekeepers didn't want me to see or quite frankly, my heart and soul wasn't ready to see. So I think Google allows us to give voice mm -hmm. um, and, and give a perspective that isn't times there um, and, and allows us to have this conversation because it is a political conversation, right? So much of what we need to do are to rally those individuals to feel safe about taking these votes, about safe on standing at a stage like this and saying these are wrong, these are lost lives, these are not, you know, these are good people. Um, and I think the more we talk about it, the more we show it, the more it's on YouTube or C-SPAN, the more we have these conversations, the safer people will feel um, to take up the cause because they know that there's a community of individuals throughout the United States who depend on it um, and who will support them in it. Mm -hmm. so. and, and, you know, if one thing that we know how to do at Google is to disrupt. Right. We are disruptors. Yep. And if anything needs to be disrupted, yep. it's mass incarceration. Absolutely. Um, and and we, we are in that, that space of using these different mm -hmm. platforms that we have at Google, yep. whether it's YouTube or it's uh, VR, to mm -hmm. be able to disrupt the human costs yep. of mass incarceration. Yep, absolutely. And it's, it's, and it's all... You know, I've learned this since um, Malika came to work for us. It's all, it's all of it, right? It's built, I mean, look at that. 80% of individuals on Rikers are awaiting trial. So presumed innocent in the eyes of the law in Rikers for years and years. Why? Because they can't, accept, they can't afford their bail, right? That's the difference between the survivors and those not is, is just bail. Right. That was, that's, a, that's an education people need. Um, why so many individuals have plead just to get out of there. Mm -hmm. The inhumanity, the soullessness. Um, and then the reintegration. You know, you talk to these individuals who come out and we expect them to be able to reintegrate. And we as a society give them absolutely no equipment to do that um, under the best of circumstances. And so there's so many discussions we need to have in this country as we just watch so many individuals just, just waste. And, you know, I, I took a group of our leadership to Rikers yep. um, and uh, we, you know, clearly we got the curated tour of right. Rikers, um, but it was powerful yep. to watch our leadership, you know, walk the halls mm -hmm. of Rikers. Um, none of them had either been to any form of jail. Uh, the individual who's vice president of engineering said to me, I didn't even know there was a difference between jail and mm -hmm. prison. Right. And so I, I guess... I, my question to you is, how do you feel that doing this work around engaging in criminal justice reform and choosing to mm -hmm. tell some of the stories of the human costs right. of incarceration, how do you feel that's, that's changed us in terms of leadership and changed the company? Well, I think for sure, look, um, the individuals that work at Google you know, throughout, throughout the country, throughout the world, um, understand the value of this social platform. And the more that they learn about these issues, the more they want to get involved in using this platform for good. Um, again, to highlight these stories, to not allow this to be that conversation that only takes place in certain neighborhoods, because that's not where the change is going to be. And so I think it really has changed Google in many ways to see that, that this, this platform um, can reach people while they're looking for videos or whatever else they go on YouTube for or searching for answers on uh, medical equipment that we can also then bring them in to a conversation that is really difficult to have, right? I mean, I think that's, we, um, 
Malika and I got to know each other because she um, worked, she ran a, um, a foundation for trafficked young girls here in the United States. Before that, I worked on child abuse. And I, and I think there's a pattern here, right? And it's, it's, it's the difficulty. It's not that people don't want to fix it. It's not that people say the heck with them on all these things. It's that if you are a good person, it's so hard to believe that these things are happening. And so we just turn away. I mean, I've been through so many things where we talk about you know, parents who sell their kids. When you have these conversations with legislators or leaders in this country, they, they don't want to hear it. They can't believe it, right? Because there's that evil, that, that inequality, the evil, um, that just makes it easier to say, I'm not going to read that article mm -hmm. on the child who died. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to read the story about mass incarceration um, and the loss of innocence and what's happening in there. I'm not going to read the story of, of you know, 12-year-olds who are trafficked because people feel powerless to do something about it. Mm -hmm. Once you can say to somebody, if you look at this, mm -hmm. you can join and help fix it, mm -hmm. then they will pay attention to it. And I think the one thing that we hope to do at Google is to give people through these convenings, through the stuff we do in VR, um, through stuff you can see on YouTube, and just having this, this conversation around the country does two things. It really kind of forces the conversation, but we also want to say to people, and here's ways that you can actually change it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, hopefully that's, that's sort of the mission that Google has taken up on this. And, and part of that has also been having a policy conversation, right, yep. where we've been bringing in uh, both sides of the aisle uh, to Google offices right. uh, to talk about this issue of the shared space mm -hmm. around reform. And, and as a former congresswoman, yep. I'm, I'm curious to know, how have you seen that um, as, as we have Senator Lee yep. and Senator Booker come and, and talk to us about their shared perspective on reform? Well, like, this isn't going to be a newsflash to anybody here, but there's not too many things that Republicans and Democrats agree on in this town lately. And so when you have, you know, leaders of both the conservative movement and Mike Lee and Senator, Senator Booker, who has just been an absolute champion right there, um, <laughs> you know, where they speak from the heart. I don't, I've seen Senator Booker speak on this so many times and I still cry when I, when I hear his passion and I hear his story. Um, you know, there's, um, there's an opportunity here. There's a real opportunity to engage in this conversation. Again, I feel hopeful about it. I feel that like, you know, again, I keep saying the gatekeepers because I do want to go back a little bit to like the Me Too movement, right? How many years has this been taking place? And then all of a sudden, the gatekeepers were gone because of Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the stories couldn't be kept quiet anymore. We want to use Google to be that, mm -hmm. that platform for the gatekeepers to say on criminal justice reform, on, on the tragedies that are taking place, um, on the lives that we're losing, on the solutions that are out there um, to sort of say, okay, like now you've seen it, now you've met these people. They are you. And so let's do something about it. Um, and I think that's, that to me is what provides such hope in, in this moment of time that we can now reach a larger group of people from New Jersey to Utah um, and, and every place in between. And, and have this conversation and mobilize the public to, again, you know, give voice to those who are not given the honor that you and I are given at, at this moment to appear before a group like this um, mm -hmm. and give voice. Like, that to me is just why we're here. So, uh, can I just say something? So, Malika is um, a force of nature. And as I said before, I got to know Malika because I joined her board on anti-trafficking. Um, and you know, Malika's Stanford, Georgetown, Brown, but when she was doing her law degree, she started working with women in prison. And so she went the NGO route because she couldn't get their voices and their faces out of, out of her head. And that is just an incredibly special woman. And so um, after working with her, I said to her, you know, it's not an NGO and we've got our corporate issues, but you've got a pretty big platform to try and make some change. And so um, we're just really grateful that she was um, able to come over to Google and, and help us um, increase our conscience. So, and and at you. first I said, why would I come to Google? <laughs> like, <laughs> what would I do at Google? And you really challenged me to you know, to be able to reimagine and rethink how we can use a platform like Google to be able to advance human rights in mm -hmm. general, yep. uh, and in particular, really thinking through how we can use our platforms to advance 
you know, what Brian Stevenson asks of us, right, to be proximate, to bear witness. Mm -hmm. and, and I think every day we're yeah. thinking about how do we use these different technologies at our disposal to be able to bear witness to suffering that is not otherwise known. Um, I think it's why the VR yeah. project that we've done with Atlantic is really exciting mm -hmm. because it allows us to scale the prison walls Absolutely. to be able to give the lived experience, even if a brief period of time, on what incarceration feels like for a grown man or for a child. Um, so I'm grateful uh, that you uh, have the leadership and the moral courage to bring Google to this incredible place of opportunity uh, on the issue of justice reform at this really powerful yeah. moment where so many people Thank are you. coming together to Yeah, well, I understand it. why you did what you did, because once I started to meet some of these um, women in particular um, that Malika would bring to our attention who have been through hell and back and still have such power and have such commitment, um, it's, you, you don't forget, you don't turn away. Well, and I want to close by um, giving thanks to so many of the advocates in the room. I mean, when you yeah. talk about doing the work around women behind bars, I did that work because of women like Inkicha Taifa. I did that work because of women like Shakira Washington. So many of the individuals who are in this room have been the powerful, fearless, mm -hmm. enduring advocates to make a better system out of our criminal legal system. Um, I want to give thanks to them. I want to give thanks to all the partners who yep. have worked with us so that we can, we can do this uh, and do it with humility and commitment. And I want to give remarkable thanks uh, and deep abiding gratitude to to the Atlantic for allowing us to do uh, this series. It's been a, it's been a real honor. And, and, and I do want to um, end by um, taking advantage of the fact that Senator Booker is off the stage to thank him for, for his leadership. Yeah. And, and honestly, he engages in this conversation as he does with so much in a bipartisan um, feeling to, to have a conversation that places blame nowhere but provides hope and solutions everywhere. And, and we need more leaders like that in Washington, DC. So thank you, Senator. Thank you, everybody.